Hey guys, Chris from Adaptivision here, and this is video number four of my POA MCQ prep for those sitting the July 2020 CSEC exams. If you've missed any of the previous videos I've done, I'm going to put a card right up there and the link in the description below to carry you to that playlist where you can view the previous videos and the ones that I will release after this. Okay, so no long intro today, let's get straight to the question. All right, so let's take a look at question 31. It says, high rent rooms, rent rooms to travelers. She received 10,000 cash in respect of rent revenue and deposited it into her business's bank account. Ooh. So what is the correct double entry to record this? All right, so double entry. So I know a lot of you guys have some issues with double entry and never really quite grasp it. Some of you all have, it, have a slightly better grasp and some of you all are double entry bosses. So that's great. Okay, so if you know the answers, of course, you guys can forward through the video and um, maybe I should put the answers to them in the, the description below. That's a good idea. Note to self. All right. Okay. In any case, so what I, in my previous video, I give you guys a little hack to help with double entry. I said, we're going to credit where it's coming from and debit where it's going. Credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going. What is it? It is the value that is coming from one, that is involved in the transaction, coming from one party or one place and going to somebody else. So it could, it could be coming from from, in this case, from whoever's renting the room and going to the, who it is? High rent rooms? Right. Now, it's coming from rent revenue. That's where the money is coming from. The source of the money is rent revenue. And where's it going? It's going to bank. It's being, as it says here, it's being deposited into the business's bank account. So, if it's coming from rent revenue or rent received, we have to credit that account. And if it's going to bank, we have to debit bank. The other way to think about it is that bank is an asset. If we're receiving money into bank, the asset is increasing. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset. Where's the money coming from? It's coming from rent revenue. We have earned revenue, therefore revenue is increasing. And to record an increase in revenue, you have to credit. So let's take a look for a debit to bank and a credit to rent revenue. So in option A, we're seeing a debit to bank but a credit to cash. So no, that won't work. Here, we have debit to bank but a credit to rent expense. That's not going to work either. Debit rent revenue credit bank. So that's a reversal of the entry. And item D, a, oh, again, I keep... I don't know what's going on, right? So here we have a debit to bank and a credit to rent revenue. So let's highlight that, not in green, right, that item. Okay, cool. So once again, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If I make any mistakes, let me know. I'll be happy to admit that and to correct it or to let you know that I didn't make a mistake if I didn't. All right, question 32. Think Carry Come Motors Limited. Now, this, by the way, some of these names may seem slightly familiar if you've been going through past papers. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All right, so Think Carry Come Motors Limited sold a vehicle on credit to IP Freely. Which of the following entries would be used to record this transaction in the books of IP Freely? So in the books of IP Freely, what is IP Freely doing? IP Freely is, well, paying freely, but apart from that, IP Freely is buying a motor vehicle on credit from Think Carry Come Motors Limited. So, a lot of you guys think the purchases account is involved when you purchase anything. That is not correct. You need to understand and remember, the purchases account is only used when we record the purchase of stock. No other asset, just stock. So, following from that, it means therefore, what are we buying? We are buying a motor vehicle. Motor vehicle is an asset. When an asset increases, you debit. And of course, the other account affected has to be credited. Now, what is the other account affected? Well, if we paid for it with a check, we would credit bank because bank would be an asset, it would be decreasing and would require a credit. If we use cash to pay for it, the same logic would apply. If we paid for it with cash, cash is decreasing. Cash is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit. But we paid neither with check nor with cash. We bought it on credit, which means we didn't pay for it. We promised to pay for it at a later point in time, which means we owe money for it. And if we owe money for anything, it is well, that amount of money we owe is classified as a liability. And the liability is increasing, which means it will require a credit to that account. Now, what, is, what account is that account? Well, where is the motor van or motor coming from? Think carry come motors limited. And once again, if you want to put double entry hack, credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going. Credit what? Well, well sorry, what, what is it? The value. What, are we, what is being traded here? A motor van. So the value of the motor van is going to the motor vehicle's account. Where is the value coming from? It's coming from Think Carry Com Motors Limited. All right, cool. So we're looking for a debit to motor van and a credit to Think Carry Com Motors Limited. So item one has a debit to purchases. 
So once again, purchases is only used to record when you purchase stock, inventory, goods, merchandise, only that asset, no other asset. Debit think carry com credit motive vehicle. So that is a reversal of the entry that we said is the correct entry. Debit motor vehicles, yes, but credit to purchases, no. Debit motor vehicles, credit think carry com motors limited. So we're gonna go with that one. All right, so let's scroll back up and then scroll across and we're gonna take a look at number 33. So the withdrawal of any resource, cash or otherwise, from a business by the owner for his or her own personal use has what effect on capital? So we know that the withdrawal of any resource, cash or otherwise, from a business by the owner for his or her own personal use is known as drawings. And drawings represents a decrease in capital. So we're gonna look through that list and look for a decrease in capital. So no effect on capital, that can be. Increase in capital, quite the opposite. Decrease in capital, there you go. Okay, none of the above. Well, no, that didn't apply. But some of you guys mightn't revise properly and you're looking for any of those trick answers. None of the above, all of the above, some of the above. Just be careful. They could put things into trick you. You need to read carefully, pay attention, and most importantly, you need to know your work. All right, so doing these videos is a good way to do it. Browsing over your notes is another good way to do it. Reading a textbook. Yes, it's a good way if the textbook works for you. If it doesn't work for you, it might be an exercise in frustration. Now, we're not trying to bat out textbooks, but at the same time, let's get the questions done, okay? Do what works for you. All right, number 34. The withdrawal of any resource, cash or otherwise, from a business, this looks familiar, from a business by the owner for his own has what effect on drawings, okay? So they're asking the same question, but one little difference. What is the effect on drawings? Well, when the owner takes a resource for his or her own personal use, that's drawings, and drawings is increasing. So, no effect on drawings. Ah, Sorry, I, I speak a different language and I make a mistake. I don't know what language it is. Right, no effect on drawings. No. Increase in drawings. Yes, there you go. It increases drawings. Automatic scroll involved, right? So, not, it wouldn't decrease drawings and it's not none of the above, so those are scrapped. Right, scroll down. Let's check out number 35. So, the withdrawal of any resource, all right, so it's the same thing. Let's take a read. Um, cash or otherwise from a business by the owner for his or her own personal use has what effect on assets? Mm. So what, is it, what, what, what was the first instinct? The owner is taking out a resource. Resources are another word for assets, or assets are another word for resources. Same thing, synonyms, right? Semantics. So the owner is taking out something. Isn't that, aren't assets decreasing? Yeah, think about it. What would be the double entry if you took out cash? Debit drawings, credit cash. When you credit the cash account, what are you in effect doing to the cash account, the balance in the cash account? Increase or decrease? Well, cash is an asset, and if you credit it, you are decreasing the balance in the cash account. So, decrease, decrease in assets. All right, none of the above, well, no, obviously that, that is not it. All right, and obviously it wouldn't be increasing assets if you're taking assets out and it wouldn't have no effect on assets because you're taking an asset out. Okay, let's see, let's see. What else do we have here? Mm, drawings again, if drawings increases, this will cause, what will it cause? Capital to increase, no. Capital to decrease, yes. Assets to increase, no. Assets to decrease, yeah. So, I should put this in TikTok like, nope, yup, nope, yup, anyhow, sorry. So, two and four, right? So, looking for two and four, two and four. Boom. Scroll down a little bit. Let's go. We have number 37, right? So, it says, the major purpose of a balance sheet or statement of financial position is to show. So, think about your balance sheet. What are the three major sets of items that go in a balance sheet? Or what, is the balance, what is your balance sheet equation? Assets equal to liabilities plus capital, or capital plus liabilities, same difference. Or assets minus liabilities equal to capital. Any way you take it, assets, liabilities, capital. So, the profit made by an entity for a given financial period. So, some of you may be saying, well, yeah, we see that in the capital section as a sole trader, and technically a partnership, and technically an LLC. So, yes, but is that the major purpose of a balance sheet? Don't think so. Let's see what else is. The changes in the capital structure of an entity for a given financial period. So what's this capital structure thing you're talking about? Capital structure is basically the capital 
structure is always it made up. If it's a sole trader, they're asking, did the owner put in more capital? Did it take out, take out capital? Did capital increase or decrease? Same thing with a partnership. Did the partners put in more? Did they take out? What's the story? For LLCs, did they, did they issue more shares? Did they buy back shares? What happens in the reserves? So capital structure. And also, when you get to forms, if, it, if you're going to do CAPE, you will learn that, that the liabilities, the long-term liabilities, also called debt, they play a part in your capital structure. And you might be thinking, but, but liabilities and capital are not the same thing. How could that be part of the structure? Well, as you go up in accounts, you will learn that capital really refers to liabilities and equity. What we know as capital, whatever the owner introduces, is actually called equity, equity capital. And the total capital is, re is really equity plus liabilities. Right? Now, you can fight minutes if you want in the comments below. No problem. Right? I have no problem talking with you guys about it, hearing what you think about it, hearing what your teacher might, might, might disagree. No problem. All right? But let's get back to the question. The resources of an entity and how they are financed at a given point in time. So the resources are the assets, and assets must come from somewhere. What are your two sources of assets? So sources of finance for assets. Capital, the owner, or equity from the owner, and liabilities from entities other than the owner. So that looks like a good one to me. The sources and uses of cash of an entity for a given financial period. Sources and uses. Now that sounds like a cash flow statement, which once again, if you go to Form 6, you will see it there. It's actually a pretty nice um, financial statement. So I'm going to go with C for this one. All right, let's scroll down a bit so we can see number 38. So premises will be classified on the statement of financial position, balance sheet as A. So premises is like land and buildings. Uh, it's an asset and it's long lasting usually. So I would say fixed, uh, fixed asset or non-current asset. So that would be option B, non-current or fixed asset for sure. Let's go back up and go across and we'll take a look at number 39. So the effect on an entity's statement of financial position, balance sheet, of the purchase of fixtures and fittings on credit will be, okay, so if we buy fixtures and fittings on credit, so if you buy fixtures and fittings as an asset, so assets are going to go up. On credit means you didn't pay for it, which means you still owe money for it, which means that's a liability, and a liability is also going up. Because now you owe money for something, whereas before you didn't owe money for it. Right? So you could also apply the, um, well, that, that's debit and credit. I was going to say credit where it's coming from, debit where it's going. But we have to analyze it from the, from the perspective of what effect is it having on the balance sheet, assets, liabilities, and equity. So option A says an increase in owner's equity and an increase in non-current assets. Um, an increase in non-current assets, yes. Increase in owner's equity. I don't think um, that's what they're looking for right now. An increase in current liabilities and a decrease in non-current assets. Well, we know for sure that non-current assets increase. So that one is out. An increase in non-current <coughs> sorry, non-current assets and a decrease in current liabilities. Well, non-current assets incre is increasing, yes. And I don't think current liabilities will be decreasing. Now, we're not told what period of time we have to pay back with this thing. So it, it could be either current or non-current. We don't know. Normally, we, we pay back for those things within a year, but it, it, it depends. Sometimes it could be more than a year. Uh, an increase in non-current assets and an increase in liability, I think is the best one here because your fixtures and fittings is a non-current asset. It is increasing and we have bought it on credit. So therefore, liabilities, whether it's current or non-current, they didn't specify. That is increasing. So I think D is the best answer here. All right. And the last question for this video. The effect on an entity's statement of financial position or balance sheet of the cash purchase of furniture is so the cash purchase of furniture furniture is an asset non-current asset it's going to go up but it's a cash purchase so cash is going to go down so you have assets going up and down so we could we can maybe look for non-current assets going up because that's furniture and we can look for current assets going down okay let's see what what options they have an increase in capital only. I'm not sure. I don't think so. No. An increase in assets and liabilities. Well, assets I would agree with, but I don't see how liabilities comes into play. Uh, an, an increase and decrease in assets. Yeah, well, that's what we just talked about. So it, it, they weren't specifying which type or types of assets were, were affected, but we could agree that 
assets went up and went down because you bought one and you used the other to pay for it. So that item that was used to pay for it, that went down and whatever you paid for went up. So assets went up and down, up and down, up and down. Sorry, I don't know if you guys know that song. That's from about 12 years ago. You were kind of small at that point in time. Anyhow, um, an increase in capital, no, so that one is out. Okay, guys, so there you have it. So those are 10 more multiple choice questions. Anyhow, guys, sorry, I don't want to take up too much of your time with too much of an extended outro, so you know what I say, all right? Um, <clears throat> once again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you need to check out the previous videos, a link to the playlist with all of these videos will be in, this, in the comment, sorry, in the description below. And once again, guys, you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do if you have the correct mindset, a growth mindset. And if you put in the work, there is no substitute for hard work. Along the way, you are bound to have trouble. You're only human. You're bound to make mistakes. Learn from those mistakes. And feel free to ask for help. Right? I ask my former teachers for help sometimes, sometimes even my students or students from who go to other schools to find out things that I may be a little rusty on or, or new perspectives or new notes. So that's fine. And as usual, if what you are doing isn't working, then you're going to need to try a different approach to it. You need to adapt because change is the only constant. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you think somebody else would benefit from this video, please feel free to send it to them, tag them in it on Facebook, send it to them on WhatsApp, whatever the case is. If you haven't already subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. You'll be notified every time I release a new video. And usually what I'm doing these days is I'm premiering the video, so I'm chatting with you guys in the, the chat, whichever side it is on, all right? And until next time, guys, stay safe, all right? Sh share your resources, share your love, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.